All right, coral dipping. So if you watched my last video, I just got in three Indo Acros, eight Zoe, Zoe and Pally Frags, and the Yellow Tang. We're not going to coral dip the Yellow Tang. Uh, he's in a quarantine tank one day. We can talk about our quarantine process here. So what we do for coral dipping, I dip everything that goes in the propagation tank because I don't want to be selling corals to people. And them getting pests and stuff like that for me, nor do I want them in the propagation tank for myself. So what I do is I got three containers, all the same, I always use them in the same order, so I make sure I stack them the same way, unstack them the same way, and then my dip, and then I have a baster for blowing them off. So what I do is I will take each one. After I've temperature acclimated the corals, put enough water to cover the corals all the way up in each container. Maybe you want to be more careful than me. I've got concrete floors, so I don't care if I drip a little water on them. But if you're in your living room or kitchen or whatever, you might not want it on your carpeting or whatever kind of hardwood or good flooring you got. But concrete here, not a big deal. So I got all three of these. So basically, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my dip. I'm going to have the first rinse, the second rinse, and then I will place the coral in the tank. So for dip, I used, this used to be Bear, now they got bought out by BioAdvanced. Bear Complete Insect Killer. It might seem harsh, but it kills everything you don't want. So, it will not kill Aptasia because Aptasia is, I mean, an anemone, it's a very strong little pest, and it's an invertebrate, and they're basically. If this stuff killed your Aptasia, it would kill your coral. So I put enough in to kind of make it like a, like a skim milk. If you prefer 2%, that's like okay, I guess. So I'm going to put a little bit more. So this is going to kill all your bristle worms and your amphipods, copepods, red bugs, nudibranches, anything that you don't want. I know you might want some of those, but you gotta take the good with the bad or let the good go with the bad. So got my skim milk, you can tell the difference compared to clean water. And I will grab them, I'm gonna do the Zoas first because then I can fit all of the Zoas in at once and then rinse those and then I'll do my Acropora. You don't have to painstakingly watch me do each one. So I get my frag. Got my waste bucket here. Cut it open. I take it out. I don't touch corals by hand. I don't know if it's my skin or if it's just everybody's. So I take it out, holding just the plug, put it in the dip, and then I'll continue to get the others. I think right here is my uh, Worldwide Corals Illuminati Pallies. These things on Worldwide Corals website go from $150 to $200 a polyp. We've got two polyps, and I'll sell them a little cheaper than that. We'll go for single digits, or double digits, not single digits. Single digits, I'd buy them for myself. I believe I've got all eight 
Zoe and Pally Frags in here. So I'm going to let them sit for a few minutes. I'm going to take my baster. I'm going to kind of blow around them. If you notice, I haven't put my hand in the dip. When I go to take these out, I'm going to be wearing gloves because if this is an insect killer, I can't imagine you want to be absorbing it through your skin. I've always got cuts and such from working. It's just not something you want to find out if, you want, if your skin likes it or not. So I'll make some movement in here, kind of break, try to break anything loose if there's any, you know, bristle worms up inside of a plug under a little piece of it or something. And this stays with that. So I'm going to let these sit for a few minutes, then we'll come back, we'll start rinsing them, we'll put it in the second one, we'll drip dry it above, put it in the second one, let it sit in there for a minute or two, rinse it off, let it drip dry, put it in the third final clean, let it sit in there, let all the dip kind of dissipate off of it, which should have happened hopefully in the second, but we just do three for safety and then it can go in the frag rack. All right, I went ahead and got the Zoas in. So I'm gonna do the acros with you because they're a little bit more visually, for the video, they're, they're bigger, so you're gonna be able to see better what we're doing. Plus we like acros more. So get your gloves on. I know what you're thinking, I could have done this off the video so you didn't have to watch me put gloves on. Wet hands, because you know how good gloves go on wet hands. So then we're going to grab them out. I generally try to go in the order I put them in, just that way things are getting the longest soak time possible. So I try to let it drip off as long as possible that's just less we're getting into the rinses. Um, I did turkey base this one off. We'll turkey base the next one off together. Or did I? So, take the turkey base here. This is pretty straightforward. It's on a solid rock. It's not like we've got a bunch of holes in it. And then we just got to get in between all the branches. Let it drip. Is that not a nice looking little acro? And then we will put it down into our first rinse. And start the next. Give it a good rinse. If you look at the bottom of these bowls after you're done, there's like, you can see whatever you killed. Like I said, you're killing off some good stuff, but it's just kind of the nature of the beast. You got, you want to be able to keep, or get the bad stuff out. Your tank should already have a bunch of good things living in it. If not, you just got to order what you want specifically, or hopefully you get lucky with some hitchhikers. But it all comes down to knowing your source. And, Trying to make sure you're getting somebody that's heard from a store that, or a friend that takes really good care of things. Or dip it yourself. But if you're looking to get pods and such, just try to get them from a safe place. I bet you this one's a little rainbow. I got some pink and some yellow looking colors on it. One piece broke off there, I got it in the dip. Looks like we already have our first frame. So we'll let it drip off good. It's a nice little frag. I wouldn't complain to be buying acros that size at a swap or something, or online. Normally it seems like everybody's selling the things in the half inch inch mark. 
There's a Zoa I missed the bag when we started, so we'll get that one through the dip. More bits and pieces. Oh, and here we go. Your, this is going to be a $400 frag. It's uh, approximately 0.312 inches. We'll give it a really fancy name. And we'll say that it's really rare. Believe me? Okay. No. But what if I took a really good Instagram picture? So we'll get that in there. Both broken pieces will get on the frag plug after we get them to the dip. Get our turkey baser down. Get these gloves off. Fast forward. And we're back. So I'm going to start with the one I put in first. No more turkey baster, that's got dip in it. So I like to just kind of swoosh it around in there, let it drip off as good as we can. And then that goes in the clean dip or clean water. Go on to the next one, give it a good rinse. I know you might think you want to do big containers use more dip, but what I just generally do is I do sections of the coral at a time. I just try to work an assembly line like I got the zoas through while the acropora were still in the or temperature acclimating because they're in bigger bags, and then I get these through. Just try to keep things moving along. There's coral slime in the water. Okay, so get my glove off. These are ready to go in the tank. Let's get a picture video when it's in the tank. Check that puppy out. Can you say rainbow? That looks like a milli to me. Giant naso. Looks like another milli. There's the piece that broke off. It's a pretty serious frag. And then the little tiny piece that broke off. Most of the zoas that are new haven't opened up. Got my space invaders reaching out, trying to meet some new friends. So there you have it. You saw the corals coming out of the bags, getting dipped. What we did. Now, so this is going to get rid of bugs, pests, insects, but it's not going to do aptasia like I was talking about. If you want to get rid of aptasia, there's a few other ways to do it. If you can scrape it easy, great. One way I like to do it is I like to mix up some calcium paste or some alkalinity, which is really thick, and then put it in a syringe and feed it directly to aptasia. Try to avoid stuff in the Donazoa's head. I imagine they wouldn't like it if it's going to kill aptasia. But that's worked really good for us. Um, so we scrape them, and then if they do seem to show any signs of still being there, or if they're in a nook and cranny, you can get them out. A little alkalinity paste, direct it right into it. It's going to kill it off. So, and then just keep an eye on your corals. It's part of quarantining, part of getting new stuff. All right, thanks for watching. Watch for more videos.